And so finally I just got aggravated with her. And I said, you know what? Jesus might just beam me up. She said, well, we hope he don't because there's going to be pure chaos around here. But never, nevertheless, I thank God for you children. And Ray Ray's been on my heart. He was sick last Sunday before. And as I see him standing there, Praise the Lord, His mercy will do it forever. Yeah. You know, He's going to be a mighty warrior. Yeah, amen. And, and, you know, amen. and Ray, Ray Ray and, and Rusty, uh, you know, it's not easy for you all to do what you're doing. And I was, uh, God speaks to me through children. Amen. I went to visit a friend that I hadn't seen for years, and uh, her son had married a woman that had two children, and uh, anyway, she used to go to church a lot and everything, but she's got older and got a lot of health problems. And I promised to come and see her, which I did. Well, her granddaughter, which would be adopted into the family, it wasn't violent. I had never seen her before, and her name was Haley. And I was sitting there talking to my friend Laura. And she came in from school, and she was writing on the book, sitting over in a chair, and I was talking to Laura. So finally, she, I guess she was watching me, listening to me, but I thought she was doing her homework. And finally, she looked at me. She said, are you a Christian that smokes? <laughs> oh, oh, no. And I said, well, I'm a Christian and I shouldn't smoke. Jesus. So anyway, she ran into the bedroom and got her little Bible and brought it back and started doing this. And we started talking about the Lord and she was asking about the locusts and all that stuff. And then I started explaining about Moses being born and how, how the... Thing was made and how all, all she said you should be a Sunday school teacher. <laughs> I'm like, thank you, Jesus. But anyway, and I remember last week Robin witnesses how easy God took the cigarettes from her. And you know, God will do it in his time. And just like somebody says, you can smell a smoker fifty feet, a preacher smoking fifty feet away. And you know, it's not a good thing. It's a bad thing. And I learned that in the world God didn't teach me that that's not a God. And you, you all just pray for me. And Howard's got to go to the doctor on the 13th. He's had a little bit of heart problems. He had four way bypass about two years ago. And he's got shortness of breath. So pray for him. And my other brother, Raymond or Carl, he had surgery. He's going better in his foot. They had to take a, a nerve out of Bonnie's foot and cut it loose and some spurs and things. And just pray for my family. Uh, I guess we're going to have to move. Things is really gotten bad, uh, uh, but you know, God told me in his word, he said, don't call evil good, call yeah. evil for evil, because you know, if I call evil good, I'm just as evil as that person is, Amen. so you all just pray with me, because you know, it's going to be a rough road to head, but you know, every step I take, God's already been, been before me prepared to play. Amen. So y'all just keep us in prayer because we desire your prayers. We love each and every one. We love Jesus. Amen. You know, you never know when somebody's watching you, do they? Nope. Little ones. We see number six in the blue book. <clears throat> Once like a bird in prison I dwell. No freedom from my sorrow I felt, but Jesus came and listened to me, and glory to God, he set me free, he set me free, yes, he set me free, and he broke the bonds of prison for me, no glory bound my Jesus to see. God, he set me free. Now I am climbing higher each day. Darkness of night has drifted away. My feet are planted on higher ground. And glory to God, I'm homeward bound. He set me free, yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. Now glory bound my Jesus to see. For glory to God, he set me free. Goodbye to sin and things that confound. Not of the world shall turn me around. Daily I'm working. 
King, I'm praying to and glory to God I'm going through. He set me free, yes, he set me free, and he broke the bonds of prison for me. And I'm glory bound my Jesus to see for glory to God he set me free.
My voice has been changing and I didn't know if I could or not. Bless you, Dad. Amen. Anybody have any prayer requests?
Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. Heaven for that jubilee, yonder in the skies. Oh, what singing, singing, oh, what shouting, shouting, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. Seems that now I almost see all the sacred dead rising for that jubilee that is just ahead. In the twinkling of an eye, change with them to me. All the living saints do fly to that jubilee. Oh, what singing, singing, oh, what shouting, shouting, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. When with all the <coughs> heavenly hosts we begin to sing, Singing in the Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join the song, with them we shall be. Praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, what singing, singing, oh, what shouting, shouting, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. first in line. First. <laughs> That's because we don't like waiting. If we're hungry, we, we want to eat now. We don't want to wait for all these people to get their food. But you know, sometimes it's better not to be first. It's better to be last. Amen. Um, 
you know, you, the first people in line might get all the cold french fries. And they might have a new, new fryer, new basket full of fries, and the last person in line gets those hot fries. So sometimes it's better to be last. I did that just to show you guys. Rusty, he let you guys go first. He didn't say that he wanted to go first. He just stood there and waited. But he ended up being all the way up here, didn't he? <clears throat> okay, well, we're going to first look at our... Um, Look at our memory verse. Um, our memory verse, it's, it's a new one. It is Mark chapter 10. together and then we're going to go through and read it a couple of times together. Okay. Mark chapter 10 verse 43. Mm -hmm. But so shall it not be among you, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Okay? Um, yeah. We're going we're gonna to memorize this too. Not all today, but we're going to keep practicing. Okay, so let's read it, read it again together, huh? Palm apart. Are you, did you find chapter 10? Chapter 10. Chapter 43. Verse 43. Alright, now let's read it again and read it together. Mark 10 and 43. But so shall it not be among you, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Okay, so what does the passage say that we should do if we want to be first? <clears throat> to be first. We, we should want, want to be a servant of all. Um, do any of you want to be, want to be a slave? Slave is, is like a servant. Do either of you want to be a slave? I thought you said you wanted to be first. <clears throat> How is it possible to be a slave and be first? Because <clears throat> you would first get the, the person that you're serving with, you get it first. Mm -hmm. You get it first. Okay. Well, we're going to find out what Jesus said about being first. Um, we all have the desire to be first, okay? I like to eat. Um, you know, when I go to, you know, a buffet or something, I don't like to stand there. I want to eat my food. I don't like to stand there and wait for people to get all their food, and I have to wait in line. I play, or to go to one of the, the homecoming dinners at the churches, and you gotta wait in line for what seems like forever. I don't like being. I don't like being last. We all have a desire to be first. Why do we want to be first? Maybe they're going to run out of food. Um, yeah. <laughs> you, know, um, you know, we we naturally feel like first is the best. We think that, you know, if you're first, that's the best. Um, we think we won't get anything if we wait until last. Well, God's Word has something to say about being first and last. Okay, <laughs> we're going to look at some more verses. 
turn to Matthew 19 and 30. Who wants to read that? Rusty? Wait. 19 and 30. Okay, Rusty. The many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Oh, okay. All right, now let's chat, turn to Matthew chapter 20. It's, it's close to air, just chapter, the next chapter, verse 16. Right, I want you to read that one. So the last shall be first. very similar, doesn't it? The last shall be first and the first last. That's what it sounds like the last verse that we read. The first shall be last and the last shall be mm -hmm. first. Okay, now turn to Mark. That's the next book over. Mark chapter 10. Verse 31. Autumn, you read that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there it is again. Okay, now let's go to Luke. Can I read this one? Chapter 13. Uh huh. So what do you think Jesus is trying to tell us there? These were all it, verses that he, things that he said. What do you think he wants? If you go first, you'll be in the last, or if you come back. Mm -hmm. He wants us to do like what Rusty did. Rusty let other people go. He was, he was, um, you know, he didn't have a selfish attitude saying, "Oh, I'm the first." Not that. Well, I mean, he he's, <laughs> But he, he, he just, he lets you guys go, and that's the way Jesus wants us to be. All right, now we're going to go to our, um, our lesson, Chain, um, turn to chap Matthew chapter 5. Matthew what? Chapter 5. Verse We're going to read in the Beatitudes. Verse um, 1. Verse, we're going to start at verse 1. <clears throat> okay? Now we're going to, I'm going to read it, and then we're going to go through it together. <clears throat> and we're going to, you can, I'm going, to, I'm going to read it through, and then we're going to go through, and, no, we'll just, we'll just go through it all together. Let's see. Okay, 
these are some attitudes that Jesus wants us to have. And we're going to look at them. start and then I'm going to give you guys little pieces, okay? And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, all right, Ray, Ray, you read verse 3. Blessed are the poor, <coughs> Lord, and spirit theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Okay, all right, so what is the attitude that Jesus wants us to have? in this verse, okay? Blessed are the poor in spirit. The poor in spirit. Um, what is it? What would it mean if, to be poor in spirit? What do you think? Now that's poor in body or poor in finances. <laughs> if you're poor in spirit, you're not puffed up, you're not arrogant, you don't think that you're um, above or better than anybody. Right. You're teachable. Yeah. Okay. Or in spirit. Robin, can I share a scripture? Yeah. Um, I, I was actually studying that very attitude this past weekend. Yeah. And um, there's a scripture in Proverbs that says, Better is a poor and a wise child than an old and foolish king who will no longer be admonished. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says that it's better to be a poor and a wise child mm -hmm. than to be old and hardened and unteachable. And wise doesn't mean I know it all. Wise means, you know, you listen to you, you take the lessons that, that you've learned and you use them not to um, make yourself look like you're all smart, but wise is often being able to be quiet and listen, listen to God and then do what he tells you to. <clears throat> all right, now what is the blessing that he says that we'll have? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. But he's blessing the poor. Right. He's blessing the, the poor in spirit. Those that, um, you know, I know that I need, that I need Jesus. All right. There's the kingdom of heaven. Two. <clears throat> or I'm, I'm sorry, read um, four. verse 4. Okay, so what's the attitude that, that Jesus want, is saying we should have in this verse? Mourn. Mourn. To be um, to grieve. To be sorrowful. Um, you know, to uh, broken hearted. Broken hearted. Okay. Okay. Now what is the blessing that comes with being with mourning? They shall be what? Comforted. Shall be comforted. What's it mean to be comforted? If you're sad or if you're afraid. He'll be there for you. He'll yeah. Be there for you. yeah. He's going to console you. He's going to make you feel better. He's going to encourage you.
Rusty, you read the next verse. Verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Okay, what does meek mean? Holy, rely on God. You know yeah. that that you're lowly. You know I'm nothing without God. Yeah. <clears throat> so meek is the attitude. I heard Adrian Rogers preach a sermon one time called "The Mighty Meek," and uh, and it was about it was what exactly what you said. It was mm -hmm. about relying completely on God. Mm -hmm. That Christ Christ wasn't a pushover. He wasn't a sissy. Mm -hmm. But he relied wholly upon God for everything that he did, and 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 that was his his might, God's might shown in his meekness. Mm -hmm. Now, what what are the meek gonna? What's gonna happen with the meek? Blessed. Blessed are the meek, for they shall what? Inherit the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, that's an inheritance, isn't it? <laughs> That's more than any, you know, uh, being king of half of the earth. Yeah, or being, um, you know, get a, an inheritance. I've got a sewing machine that I've inherited <laughs> from my aunt. The sewing machine. But he's saying the meek shall inherit the earth. Amen. Okay. The earth. Uh huh. Okay. Who's next? Rusty, you read one, right? Uh, Ray, you read the next one. Read um, verse six. six. Blessed are they which do hunger and their thirst. Thirst after righteousness. Righteousness, for they shall be filled. Okay. So, what's the attitude? What What does he? What's the attitude he wants us to have in this in this verse? Hunger and thirst for what? For righteousness. You want to, um, you want to do God's will. You want to um, learn. You want Him to speak to you. You want Him to teach you. You're thirsting after um, righteousness. What's the blessing that they get? They, get. they shall be what? <laughs> filled. They're going to be filled. Amen. They're going to be full. <sighs> It'll happen. You'll um, have righteousness. You'll, you're going to, you know, he's going to fill that that need. Amen. You won't be with French fries, will <laughs> No, you won't. <laughs> Hot or cold. Hallelujah. Okay, the next one. Who's got? Isn't it Autumn's? Autumn. Okay, I like this one. Okay. Verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Okay, what's the attitude he wants us to have in this verse? Blessed are the merciful. Okay, what's it mean to be merciful? Um, willing to forgive, amen. to be um, compassionate, um, help. yeah, to help somebody even if you have nothing to gain from from helping that person. Amen. You're helping that person just because you love them and you want them to not suffer. You care for that person. You have compassion on them. Um, you might feel sorry for somebody. So merciful is the next one. And what is what is their blessing going to be? 
they shall obtain mercy. Amen. Who need who? We need mercy. Amen. And who who do we need mercy? What, what do we need mercy? What do we need mercy for? Our sins. Amen. Who do we need mercy from? Who do who do we need to have mercy upon us? So they're going to obtain mercy. Well, I keep grabbing a new tissue, and I've got two of them up here already. <laughs> so if we're um, merciful, we're willing to forgive, then God is willing to forgive us, isn't he? All right. Who's got the next one? Freshie. Verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Okay, what's that? What's the attitude in this one? Blessed are the <clears throat> pure in heart. Okay, what's it mean to be pure in heart? To have your heart pure. Okay, how does it, um, what does that mean if you're pure, though? You're clean. You're clean. You're blameless. You don't have um, guilt. The sins are gone Amen. out of your heart. Um, how do we how do we become pure in heart? What makes us pure? Mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Jesus' blood makes it makes us pure, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Pure in heart. Okay. What's their blessing going to be? They shall what? Verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. See God. Amen. Wow. Okay. Now who's next? Okay, read verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be Blessed are the peacemakers. peacemakers. What's it mean to be a peacemaker? To have peace. To have peace. Um, to make peace. To make peace. Yeah, to help others to, Amen. to have peace. Um, you're not a, a, you don't strive with people to you know, fuss with them, to stir up trouble. You want there to be peace. Let's, let's get along. Peacemakers. So what's their blessing? They'll be called from God. They'll be called. They'll be called the children of God. Amen. Wow. I'll grab a new tissue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's the next one? Autumn. Verse 10. Autumn. What's the attitude that he wants us to have in this one? Blessed, blessed are they which are what? Persecuted yes. for righteousness sake. Amen. What's it mean to be persecuted? If you're persecuted, um, people might make fun of you for being a Christian. They might, um, you know, be against you for being a Christian. They might say, why? Why are you a Christian? You know, they just may try to try to sow doubt in your mind. Um, you know, Jesus was persecuted. So, persecuted for righteousness sake. That's right. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Alright, who's 
next one, Rusty. You read verse 11. Blessed are ye men when men shall reveal you and persecute you and shall say a manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. So again, when men shall revile you, what does revile mean? Say evil things. Mm -hmm. What is it? Say evil things about you. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're going even farther than persecuting you. They're not just trying to um, you know, make fun of you. They're, they're going to other people and they're telling lies about you and they're just really, they want bad things to happen to you. For Jesus, because, because you love Jesus. Yes, because, because, you, because you love Jesus. Um, so... So what is that? What is the blessing? That verse. Well, read verse twelve. Who's the next person to read? Ray. Wait. Now read. Start over. Rejoice. Rejoice. And be executing. Exceeding. Exceeding. Glad. Glad for great is your reward in heaven for so. Persecuted. Persecuted. They the prophets. The prophets. Which are which before, were before you. Before you. So even though these people are they're um, you know going to other people, they're telling telling lies on you, you know, everybody's turned against you, he says to rejoice Amen. and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. <clears throat> Rejoice, great is your reward. Okay. That goes along with Dad's testimony. Dad said about how he where he was in business and things and uh -huh. about how that when people would find out that you were a Christian they try to do you all the more wrong yeah. uh, but he still stood firm in what he believed mm -hmm. and you know when you suffer for being a Christian you know for, for the Lord's name's sake the Bible said there that for us to rejoice and be exceeding glad Amen. so don't you know turn back against Jesus don't deny Jesus because the world's coming against you don't turn against Jesus. You know, stay with Jesus. Jesus is on your side. Amen. Amen. And you don't, you know, those other people, they don't matter. None of them matter. These are the attitudes that Jesus wants us to have. And these are the blessings that um, we'll receive uh, if, we, if we have these attitudes. Um, <clears throat> do you want to spend eternity in heaven? Yes. Do you want to be comforted when you're sad? Yes. Do you want to be satisfied when you want to do what's right? Do you, when you're seeking after Jesus, do you want to receive um, the righteousness? Do you, you know, do you do you hunger for it? Do you want mercy? Do you want God to have mercy on Amen. you? Um, do you want to be with God? Do you want to see God? Do you want a reward in heaven? Yeah. These are all blessings that we want. We have two more attitudes and blessings to add. And we'll read, turn to Mark chapter 10. This is our memory verse. Chapter 10. Verses 43 to 45. Chapter 10. Okay. 
who wants to read it? Ready? You read the verse, you read the verse, and then Autumn reads the verse. But so shall it not be among you, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your best minister. minister. Okay. Um, so what, what is a minister? This one's written a little bit backwards from the Beatitudes. The, the attitudes were first and then the blessing was after. Um, but here the, um, the attitude is last in the verse. What is a, what is a minister? Um, well, a minister is, like your dad, is a minister of God. Okay? God is his boss. And then he, um, your dad, you know, he brings the message to us. He is, um, he's a servant of God. He's a messenger. Yeah, he's a messenger. Okay, so minister is the attitude he wants us to have. Thank you, Ray. You're welcome. Okay. So what kind of, what blessing is that minister going to have? <clears throat> He's going to be great among you. I think it's interesting that this is the opposite of the way that lost or uh, sinners think. A lot of times sinner, sinners say, well, if I, uh, you know, that that I, I should be exalted or I should be lifted up. Mm -hmm. And and if I'm lift, you know, if I am lifted up, then, you know, I'll, I'll help people. Mm -hmm. But the Lord's telling us that we're need, that we need to be a servant. Amen. First. That's first. You know, if you're willing to, uh, pick up trash or dig a ditch or clean a toilet yes. or or whatever it takes to be a blessing to somebody. Whatever it takes to give of yourself. Amen. Because the Lord told us it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Mm -hmm. And and that's exactly the complete opposite of the way the world thinks. The world says, give me, give me, give me. It's about me. I want. Give to me. I, but God tells us if we give of ourselves to the present our bodies a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. If we do, if we do that, and, and that, as you said here, the Lord tells us that He'll bless us because of that, and we don't do it for that reason. Amen. But but we but we are but we're a, a servant to, to others because of what God has already done for us, because it, because He loved us when we were unlovable, and, and we want others to have that same blessing. And it's not just coming to church; it's not just preaching. I mean, it, you can go to work and be a servant. Amen. You can go to work and say, look, I'm not coming here. I'm not coming here just to get paid. I'm coming here to glorify God. The work that I'm doing, I'm going to be a servant. If, if my boss asks me to do something that's outside of my job scope, I'm not going to argue and grumble and complain. I'm going to do it the best I Amen. can. Whatever I do, do it heartily is under the Lord Amen. and not under men. And whatever, whatever God charges us to do, we do it. With all of our heart. Amen. And you know what? People will see a difference. People will see the reality of God inside of us. And I, I'm blessed by this, honey. That's a wonderful, wonderful. Good. Praise the Lord. Um, the next verse. Rusty, you read verse 44. Um, Mark chapter 10 and 44. Mark chapter 10. Mm -hmm. Verse 44. Mm -hmm. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. Wow. Amen. So servant. He wants us to be a servant. What is a what do you think of when you think of a servant? Helping somebody. Yeah. <clears throat> um, a 
servant is a slave. A servant is someone, you know, when you, uh, you know, when, again, when you go out to eat. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just works out that way. <laughs> you, know, you have a server. They come and they, um, they bring your drinks. You know, they'll bring your food. They'll, you know, if you say, I need some extra napkins, they go right and get it, and they so bring I, it to I you. Mm -hmm. Now, they're getting paid, but, you know, we need to be willing to, to be a servant and, you know, not uh, say, okay, well, what are you going to give me in return? Um, we need to do it just because, you know, that's the attitude that he wants us to have. If you're a servant, you're devoted to another Amen. with disregard Hallelujah. of your own self. You serve others. And what is that servant, what blessing is that servant going to, going to have? Chiefest. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. When you think of an Indian um, tribe, chief. the chief is the top dog, isn't he? He's he's the he's the highest um, person in that um, in that tribe in that group of people. He's the chiefest. Who read last, Rusty? Autumn, you read the next verse. Verse, verse forty-five. So how do these verses match up to, to these attitudes that we went through? How does that last verse right there, for even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto. So Jesus had all of these attitudes. Yes, he does. All, all of those attitudes are, are what Jesus, are attitudes that Jesus had. And they're the attitudes that Jesus wants us to have. Um, our attitudes directly affect what happens to us. They're Jesus' attitudes, and they'll, they bring blessings to us. And those are the blessings that we're going to receive if we have those attitudes. Why do we need to have Jesus' attitudes? <coughs> what's, in, what's important to, why is it important to have Jesus' attitude? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, that's, that's the way God wants us to live, doesn't he? He wants us to love others. He wants us to care for others. He, you know, he didn't put us here on this earth to say, you know, it's all about me and what I want. He wants us to serve him. He wants us to be willing to serve others. He, um, you know, this is the way that he created us to be, to have these attitudes. Now, how do we get Jesus' attitudes? <clears throat> Obey him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to do, you have to, you know, put yourself in the mindset of being a servant. You know, that's, that's sort of, you know, what... Uh, how a servant is. Um, so when you think of a servant, you kind of think of a waiter, right? Well, I do anyway, because I stick food. <laughs> so, like if you, if you uh, have you ever seen like in a movie how a waiter would, I forgot to bring napkins, would drape, would put a napkin on their arm like this, and they would come to the table. We, I don't think we've ever been to a restaurant that did that, but we've seen it in movies, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Well, we're, um, I meant to bring napkins again. So we're going to this week, um, I'm going to get some napkins when we go by the store, and we're going to write um, 
on the napkin, let others go first. And then as you go throughout the week, and if you let, as you, each time that you let someone else go first, that you prefer your brother, that you, you know, um, don't put yourself first, you put a check mark on your, on your napkin. Maybe we can make a contest and see who could come up with the most check marks. What do y'all think? Fun to do, wouldn't it? Yeah. All right. Help others. Mm -hmm. Help others. Even if they can't help you in return. You just help them just because that's the attitude that God wants you to have. Instead of us coming to you and saying, hey, well, let me go first. It's more like, oh, but he won't let me go first, so he ain't me. Uh-huh. All right. Well, let's um, review our other past memory verses. Do you think you all can remember these? Well, turn, go ahead and turn your Bibles to John chapter 20. other signs Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that believing he might have life through his name okay now let's read let's um, go to first John chapter 5 Turn the Bible, first John chapter five. First John chapter five and verse three. Well, we were supposed to memorize like all five verses, but uh, we weren't able to do that. So first John five and three. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. So these things, these these are commandments. You know, these are are um, you know instructions from God. These are commandments, and these are not grievous. You know, we should we should listen to Him. We should um, obey Him. You know, without having a bad attitude about it, we should do it. You know, with joy. Amen. And Mark chapter ten, forty three and forty five. Y'all turn to Mark chapter ten. This is the last one. Forty three to forty five. What? Forty three to forty five. Everybody ready? Okay. Okay. But so shall it not be among you, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. All right. It 
the preacher's in the road, we will stop and pick him up. If the preacher's in the road, we will stop and pick him up. If the preacher's in the road, we will stop and pick him up. But we can't hang on or be behind. If the devil's in the road, we will roll right over him. If the devil's in the road, we will roll right over him. If the devil's in the road, we will roll right over him. But we can't hang on or be behind. <coughs> what else do I say?
When with this and we enter the glory land, won't it be wonderful day? In the troubles and cares of the stories land, won't it be wonderful day? Won't it be wonderful day? Having no burdens to bear, joyously singing with heart bells all ringing, oh, won't it be wonderful day? Walking and talking with Christ the supernal one, won't it be wonderful there? Praising, adoring, the matchless eternal one, won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear, joyously singing with heart bells all ringing, oh, won't it be wonderful there? There when the tempest will never be sweeping, yes, won't it be wonderful there? Sure that forever the Lord will be keeping, yes, won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear, joyously singing with heart bells all ringing, oh, won't it be wonderful there? serve and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high yeah. above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God blessed shall thou be in the city and blessed shall thou be in the field blessed shall thou be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of the cattle and the increase of the kind and flocks of thy sheep blessed shall be thy basket and thy store blessed shall be thou when thou comest in, and flesh shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Yeah. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in the storehouse and all that thou settest thy hands unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his way. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods and in fruit and of thy body, and of the fruit of the cattle and the fruit of the ground and the land, which the Lord swears unto the fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasures, the heaven to give the rain unto the land in his seasons, and to be blessed all the works of thy hands. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And yeah. the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt not, thou, sh thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. And if thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them, and Thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Good night, Brother.
That's a blessing, what Sister Gail read there. Yes. You know, uh, if you look at that scripture there that she was uh, reading on, there's a lot of curses in there Amen. after that. Amen. Uh, those that don't hearken to the Lord. There's lots of curses. There's actually more curses there at Shea in that scripture than there are blessings. And uh, uh, the Lord showed me here one time about what Christ took upon him at the cross because he bore our curse for us being made a curse for us that the blessings of Abraham might become upon the Gentiles and so we when we read those curses we can see all of those curses and we can begin to somewhat understand what Christ bore on the cross for us and when he wore that crown of thorns and wore he became a curse for us and all of those curses there in Deuteronomy 28 it and if you take that scripture and then you look over in Galatians and you see where it says that Christ was made a curse for us, uh, it, it blesses me to realize that he was made a curse for us uh, so that we could have those blessings that our sister read. Uh, I desire to be blessed from God. I don't Amen. desire to be blessed from man, but I desire to be blessed from God Almighty. Amen. Look with me, if you would, at uh, Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. And uh, we've been going through a uh, timeline to heaven. And uh, how many of you are excited about going to heaven? Amen. I'm excited about going to heaven. I'm excited about, uh, I'm excited about the things that are to come. I'm excited about the rapture. I'm excited about being called up. Hallelujah. Amen. It, it blessed me thinking about how the friends of Elijah thought that he had been carried away on a mountain somewhere. And, and uh, glory be to God, how, the, how the, they went looking for him for three days and they couldn't find him. And uh, Elisha said, well, I told you not to go. And, and glory be to God, how that uh, uh, Jesus said that, uh, that uh, uh, you shall seek me and shall not find me. And whither I go, thither you cannot come. And uh, glory be to God, I, I'm looking for the day. Uh, that I'm going to be called out of here. And uh, glory be to God, the Bible said that it's called our blessed hope. Amen. That we're looking for the blessed hope Amen. and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus. Amen. I'm looking forward to being spared from the hour of temptation. That'll, be, uh, that'll come upon the whole earth to try the entire world. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to uh, going to heaven and, and, uh, and, and the... And, and our bodies being glorified with a body that's fashioned like unto Jesus' body, as it tells us in Philippians 2. And I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, receiving the rewards uh, that, that the Lord uh, tells us that we will receive uh, because of the things that we have done in this body, in this lifetime, uh, to glorify Him, things that were uh, to give glory and honor and praise to Jesus. You know, no matter how small something might seem to you, no matter how small it might seem to you, if God has called you to do it, amen, it'll be great when that day of judgment comes at the judgment seat of Christ. It'll be great. And you'll, I believe the Lord will say to us, he'll, he'll give us a reward and we'll say, well, Lord, I, I don't think, I don't feel like I deserve that. Lord, that was just something small that you asked me to do. And he'll say, nevertheless, Enter into the joy of the Lord, thy good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. You know, many men will speak of their own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. That's what the scripture says. You know, the Lord just wants us to be faithful in what he calls us to do. Now, we can put more things on ourselves than we're able to bear. And I guarantee you the enemy will do that. The enemy will try to get you to think, well, i got to do this and this and this and that and earn this and earn that and everything else. And brother, you'll be so caught that you won't want to do nothing because you get so overwhelmed with things trying. And brother, that's the way he does you. He'll t he, just like he tried to do the children of Israel. You, you go and make uh, bricks without straw or mortar. Amen. And uh, glory be to God, we just need to do what God calls us to do. Amen. And you'll have peace about it. You'll have peace about what God calls you to do. But brother, if God calls you to do something and you don't do it, 
<laughs> woe to that man. Woe to that man. That's like what Paul said. Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Amen? Hallelujah. You'd be like Jonah. You'd be in the belly of the whale. Uh, he, he said, out of, the bell, out, of the, out of the pit of hell I cried, is what Jonah said. That's what he likened the belly of that whale to, was the pit of hell. He cried unto God for mercy. And you know what? He didn't delay in obeying the next time. He took off running, didn't he, Brother Jim? Hallelujah. It was a three days journey. But he made it one day. Amen. Hallelujah. He was running with all he had. <laughs> I don't want to go back to the belly of that well again. Amen. I said, glory be to God. God's going to take even two pence like the poor widow woman gave. Gave more than all of the rich men gave out of their abundance. Yeah. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. God's going to give rewards. While tribulation and great woe is going on upon the world here, we'll be receiving rewards in heaven. God will be appointing us to what He's going to call us to do, what He's going to have us to do in the millennial kingdom. We know that the Antichrist is going to be revealed. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that man be revealed who the Lord shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Amen. He'll be revealed after we're gone. So don't tell me that you think somebody's the Antichrist. Because brother, I'm going to be out of here Amen. when the Antichrist is here. Yes. Amen. I'm going to be gone. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother, I'm, I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm not looking for a, a great tribulation. I'm looking to be taken to heaven. Yeah. I'm looking. I'm, hallelujah. I'm excited about being called up. Yeah. And glory be to God. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for Jesus coming back. Amen. And coming back with him. As it says in the book of Jude, that Enoch prophesied of these that the Lord shall return with ten thousands of his saints. Amen. I'm looking forward to coming back with Jesus. Clothed in raiment, fine and white and clean, hallelujah, and the righteousness of God Almighty in Jesus, amen, uh, that, that has a vesture dipped in blood. His name is the Word of God. Amen. And the Bible says that he'll tread the winepress of the wrath and the fierceness of Almighty God. Jesus will come back, and the nations will be gathered together against him to make war, and he'll smite them with the rod of his mouth, the Bible tells us. Jesus will speak. And the war will be over. Armageddon will take place. Amen. I'm looking forward to it. I am looking forward to coming back with Jesus. Uh, but I'm also looking forward to the millennial reign. And amen. I, I am looking forward. A lot of folks have never heard of the millennial reign. A lot of folks have not, have not even heard. It's not, it's not talked about a lot. It's not preached about a lot. A lot of people don't, don't even realize that this is going to happen. But brother, it's according to the scriptures. We believe that Jesus died and was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. Amen. Amen. Right. Same way with the millennial reign. We believe the millennial reign according to the scriptures. Amen. Amen. God's word is forever settled in heaven and he has given us his written word. Amen. To guide us as, a, as our roadmap, our direction. And I'm thankful, thankful for that. So we look at our Revelation uh, chapter 20. And uh, the Bible says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up, and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now let's go together in prayer before God's throne. Father Almighty, 
in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we praise you and we thank you, Father, for your infallible word. We praise you, Father God, Lord, for your spirit inside of us, Father, which causes us to walk in your statutes and in your word and in your truth. For, Father God, Lord, I could never do anything on my own that's pleasing to you, Father. But, Lord God, you sent the Comforter, my Savior God, to guide us into all truth, dear Lord God, knowing that he doesn't speak of himself, but he testifies of Jesus, Father. Lord, we thank you so much for that, dear Lord God, for knowing that the truth makes us free, Father. And Lord God, help us, dear Lord, to be looking forward to these things, dear Lord, that you have promised. Help us, dear Lord, that we might be able to tell the world, dear Lord, of the things to come. For, Lord God, we know that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, Father. Lord God, we just praise you for that, Father. Lord God, we give you all the glory. Open our eyes and open our hearts and open our minds, dear Lord, that we might be able to receive your word and bring forth fruit, fruit dear Lord God, unto you and your kingdom. And, Father, we'll give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen. The Word tells us here, amen, that there's, a, uh, that there's going to be an angel that will take hold of Satan and will bind him for a thousand years and that he'll not deceive the nations. And after that, he'll be loosed for a little season. Lord willing, we'll get to that in the next sermon. Uh, but uh, we see that it says, And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Uh, that, uh, and uh, he said that I saw the souls of them that were beheaded, for the witness of Jesus. And he says and that they not worship the beast nor his image. Uh, so here what we see is a first resurrection. We see here a resurrection of people who were martyred during the tribulation. There will be people whose heads are cut off. There will be people who will die for the gospel. They will become believers and they will die during the tribulation time. And the Bible tells us here that they are resurrected. They are brought back to life. Amen. They are brought back to life and they reign with Christ for a thousand years. I believe that there will be Jewish people who will die for the gospel of Jesus Christ. They will believe the gospel of Jesus. There will be some that will die. And here we see that they are brought back to life. They are resurrected. Hallelujah. I tell you that, hallelujah, we serve the living God. Amen. Amen. We don't serve some dead idol. We serve the living God. Amen. As Jesus uh, uh, told uh, the Pharisees, he says that, uh, uh, that, that, uh, that, that uh, Abraham and Isaac, he spoke of Abraham and Isaac as if they were still living because they were alive with God. Amen. And amen, we live, amen, with him. And the Bible says that they uh, did not receive the mark of the beast. They didn't take his image in their, in, his, in their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and they reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, I was really blessed by Robin's, uh, by the, the, the teaching that Robin gave. It was such a blessing, amen. And, and uh, I happened to see a scripture that, went, that was right there close to where she was reading in Matthew chapter 19. And, it, and, and Peter had asked, asked the Lord, he says, uh, uh, Peter said, uh, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have, therefore? What are we going to have? I've forsaken everything. You remember, they were fishermen. Amen? They were fishermen. They forsook their nets and they followed Jesus. Amen? Right? And the Bible says, And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye, shall, that ye which have followed me in the generation, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Brother, we are going to be judges in this world. We are going to be judges in this world. I tell you what, brother, we have something to look forward to. God delights in judgment. Amen. Amen. Judgment begins at the house of God. Hallelujah. Did you know that if we'll judge ourselves that we shall not be judged? Amen. That's what the scripture says. God delights in judgment. He delights in judgment. And God is going to have us in a glorified body. We are going to, to judge the nations. Now these also that were beheaded and, and were martyred for the gospel of Christ, they will judge, they will reign. In other words, the Bible tells us here they will reign with Christ a thousand years. 
And that, that is the first resurrection. There's going to be a judgment. Jesus spoke of it. In Matthew chapter 25, there's going to be a judgment when Christ returns. Now, amen, I, I hope that you're following along with me because you get a blessing. You get a blessing from the Word of God, amen. Uh, I'm thankful for what the Word of God says. Don't just take for granted what a man tells you. Well, you read it for yourself, amen. That's what we need to do. That's what John said. He said, blessed is he that readeth, amen. Uh, brother, reading the Word of God helps us uh, to, to get it into our heart and into our soul. Matthew 25 and verse 31. The Bible says, When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. And before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. So brother, there's going to be there are going to be people who are left after Armageddon. There will be people that will not all die. Amen. There's going to be a lot of people that die. The blood's going to be so deep, it's going to be as deep as a horse's bridle. Amen. Amen. It's going to run. But brother, uh, the, the Bible tells us here that all nations are going to be gathered together. After Armageddon comes, there's going to be people who are left. There's going to be people who are still alive. And the angels are going to go and they're going to gather them all together and they're going to, and he, they're going to bring them before Christ to be judged. This is not to be confused with the rapture. This is, this is the judgment, the millennial judgment that Christ is speaking of here. He says that, he, that the angel that before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Now how is he going to judge them? This is not a judgment of salvation. This is not a judgment of salvation. People take this scripture. Brother, we, the Bible tells us that we must study to show ourselves as approved uh, unto God. Amen. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Brother, we need to study the Bible. The Bible is not to just be read like any book. We are to take scripture and to compare spiritual things with spiritual things. The Bible says that how is how's Christ going to judge? The Bible says that he'll set his sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. And he'll say, the king shall say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now, what the Bible told us there, uh, uh, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Amen. Amen. That was one of the, be the Beatitudes. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit... What's that mean to inherit the earth? Uh, it, brother, it doesn't, it, it doesn't just mean an allegory. It doesn't just mean spiritually. Amen. Blessed are those that trust in God, for God is their strength, brother, because they will literally inherit the earth. They will literally reign upon this earth. Hallelujah. In Christ's throne with Him. Hallelujah. That excites me. That excites me. Amen. He says, come ye blessed. Hallelujah. That's what we can learn about. Blessed. Come ye blessed. Hallelujah. Of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord... When saw we thee and hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king answered and said unto them, Shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, so much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Amen. This is a wonderful principle to live by today. Amen. It's a wonderful principle to live by today. But Jesus is referring to, Brother, in the tribulation time, it is going to be a dark time. Yeah. It is going to be a horrible time. Of, of The Bible said that, as Brother Jim and I were talking about, that God Himself will send strong delusion yeah. upon this world. You know what it means to, be, to, to have delusion? Brother, thinking that you are right and everything is fine, but you're actually wrong. Yeah. 
You're actually wrong. Thinking that you're going to heaven and that everything's right and that you're worshiping the Messiah, but you're actually worshiping the Antichrist. And you've received his mark and you're on your way to a pit of fire for eternity. That's strong delusion. There's going to be folks that are going to say, I'm not taking the mark. I see him for who he is. I see him for who he is and I'm going to believe Jesus. I'm going to believe what my forefathers told me about. I'm going to believe what, what I learned about uh, the way that it used to be before the church was taken out of here. I'm going to believe what the old time prophets said and I'm going to do what God calls me to do. And there's going to be people saved during the tribulation. They're going to die. There's going to be people who are die, that die and are beheaded. But you know what they're going to do? They're going to go and they're going to take food to the hungry. They're going to give drink to those that are thirsty. Those that are strangers, they're going to give them shelter. Those that are in prison for the gospel's sake, they're going to go and visit them. This is going to happen during the tribulation time. And Jesus is going to judge those who are left after the tribulation in the millennial kingdom. Jesus is going to judge them. Jesus is going to say, who are the ones, who are the ones that are worthy to come into my kingdom? Who are the ones that are worthy of, of, of coming into my kingdom? Did they, did they live by the gospel's sake? Now, we're not talking about heaven. This is not heaven, brother. This is the millennial reign. We're not to heaven yet. We're not to heaven yet. I'm telling you, brother, that to be absent from the bodies and be present with the Lord, we go in our spirit and we go to be with the Lord. But, brother, there's coming a day when God is going to set up His kingdom on this earth and Amen. reign for a thousand years. Amen. That's what the Bible tells us. I'm not telling you tradition here. I'm telling you Bible scripture. This is Bible word. So there's going to be those that, that help others in the tribulation period. And Christ is going to say, you get to come into the millennial reign. You get to come and you get to live upon this earth. You get to live here. But what's he going to say to those that didn't? The Bible says, Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was a hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it unto one of the least of these, ye did it not unto me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So here we see that they're going, that, that they will be. Uh, they will come into the, the millennial kingdom of Christ. There will be a, a, a millennial, a, a thousand years. Also in Matthew chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13, verses, uh, beginning at verse 36, Jesus is uh, giving us a parable, and he's telling us about uh, uh, how that there's going to be this judgment. The Bible says that, uh, and, uh, that Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. Now a tear, is, it looks like a wheat, piece of wheat. Yeah. Wheats and tares look alike. But the difference between wheat and tear is that wheat bears fruit. Yeah. The tear does not bear fruit. Right. And he answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. And, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. And as therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. For the Son of Man shall send forth His angels, and they shall gather out of His kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a burning furnace of fire, and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun uh, in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Amen. There's going to be a judgment at the millennial kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Jesus is going to restore the things the way they should be on this earth. That's right. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking to see him the proud cast down and Jesus lifted up. Whoo, hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Man, it's, it's something to look forward to. And I, there's, there's going to be an extraordinary life during the millennial kingdom. <clears throat> there are going to be people literally living upon this earth. Now listen, if you're saved today and you are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and you are taken out of, taken out of here when God takes His church home, you will not live in the millennial kingdom in the flesh as a mortal. You will reign with Christ. You will reign with Christ. I, brother, look, listen, I, I don't feel like I deserve it, but God told me that it's mine. Hallelujah, yes, Amen. Amen. Yeah, and it's not, any, it's not whether you deserve it or not, it's whether what, you trust what Christ did Amen. for you. Because it's the blood of Jesus Amen. that makes you righteous. Right. It's the blood of Jesus that right. saves you. Yes. It's what Jesus did for you Amen. that makes you righteous. And glory be to God. God said it, and I believe it. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, glory be to God. It excites me to think about that He that He is going to have us to reign with Him. But there will be those who 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 come through the judgment that are not cast in the lake of fire, who in their mortal flesh live upon the earth. They will begin to repopulate the earth. They will begin to repopulate. They will build houses. They will build homes. We're going to learn a little bit about what the millennial kingdom will be like. Oh, boy. Yes, Hallelujah. Let's look at Zechariah, the book of Zechariah, chapter 14. There will be choices that need to be made. This is one of the things that led me to this study. Will people have a choice to serve God during the millennial kingdom? And uh, so we look at Zechariah, the book of Zechariah, chapter 14. And so we, let's look at the beginning. And the beginning talks, talks about the day of the Lord, Armageddon. And it says that, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. Thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished. And half the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. So we see that here's the return of the Lord. The people of Israel, God's Jewish people, cry out for him. Jesus comes back. Amen. It's Armageddon. The Lord smites the earth with the rod of his mouth. So let's skip over here. Let's skip over here to verse 16. And it shall come to pass, verse 16 in Zechariah 14, And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not up and have no rain, there shall, be, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. People who live in the millennial reign will need to choose whether they're going to worship God or not. They will need to choose it. They will need to choose. They'll go and they'll enjoy a life of plenty. It will be an amazing time. But the curse, the curse has not been completely taken away. That's what it said right here. There will be those, there will be those that have a plague. There will be those who, that will not have a rain, have rain, because they chose not to follow or to, to worship God in that time. The, the, remember, we're not in heaven yet. Heaven has not came. New Jerusalem has not descended from heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. Yet, we're in the millennial reign. There is a timeline till heaven. There is a progression of events that take place before heaven. 
before these things happen. Glory be to God, we've got a lot to look forward to. But there are going to be people during the millennial reign who choose, now we, we understand from what we read to begin with, that Satan's going to be loosed a little season. We'll get into that next week. Satan's going to be loosed a little season and, he, and he'll go and deceive the nations again. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible reads. Sure. That's what it reads, brother. He will be loosed a little season. Then will come the battle of Gog and Magog. And then fire will come from heaven. And then Satan and the beast, they'll be cast into the lake of fire for eternity. Then will be the great white throne judgment. You see, there's a progression of events. Right now, we're in the millennial reign. Right now, there are those who have came through the judgment, those that came through the tribulation, those that, uh, uh, that, that were still alive after Armageddon, and they had done some, some kind of good work in order to come into the millennial reign, and they're living during the millennial reign, and they need to choose whether they're going to go and worship the Lord or whether they're not going to worship the Lord. And uh, regardless, it's going to be a place of great blessing. You see, there's going to be folks that live during the millennial reign like it was back in Adam's day, like it was back in Noah's day, that live hundreds of years old. There will be people that live to be hundreds of years old. Look with me, if you would, at Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah chapter 65. Now, the book of Isaiah gives us much of the revelation of, of the millennial reign, things that happen in the millennial reign. And that's why a lot of times when folks may look at the book of Isaiah, they try to apply it to, to, to or spiritualize it to today's society. And, and, it, and it, there's good moral instruction for today's society, but a lot of the book of Isaiah and the later end of the book of Isaiah is prophecy. It's things that have not happened yet. Things that are going to come to pass. Book of Isaiah 65 and verse 20. There shall be no more fence and infinite days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. There's going to be there's going to still be curses during the millennial reign. Sure. Because people, people will not choose to follow the Lord. If you choose to follow the Lord, what our sisters say? You're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed. Even still, during the millennial reign, if people choose to not follow the Lord in their mortal bodies, I'm not talking about you and I, because we're reigning with Jesus during the millennial reign. Amen? We'll reign and we'll be kings and priests. Amen? How we're going to get to something at the end, it's going to bless your socks off. And if it doesn't, your blessing's broken. You need to re-up with the Lord. We're going to be reigning with the Lord. And there's going to be people who need to choose. The Bible told us there that there's going to be, if someone dies at 100 years old, they're going to be considered a child at 100 years old. And a man that doesn't live to be 100 years old, he's going to be considered that he's cursed because of the blessing of the Lord. Jesus has came back and he is reigning on the earth in righteousness. He's not judging after the seeing of his eyes or the hearing of his ears, but he's judging the world in righteousness and he's using you to do it. He's using you and what you have done in this life today. The rewards that you are given in the millennial reign, the rewards that you are given to serve Christ during the millennial kingdom, during all forever and eternity, what you're doing today as a Christian will count tomorrow and eternity Amen. and serving God. Mm -hmm. We will serve Him forever. Amen. When you get to heaven, you're not going to just sit there That's and have nothing to do. You're going to serve Praise God. God. You're going to serve God. You're going to judge the nations afar off. Christ is going to use you to have peace on this world. He will use you. He will use you. You've been faithful in a few things. He's going to make you ruler over ten cities. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. So people are going to live to be hundreds of years old. Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35. There's going to be uh, the deserts. The, uh, the uh, places that are barren and dry. 
The Bible says in Isaiah 35, The wilderness shall, and the solitary place shall be glad for them. The desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. It's going to be, the deserts are going to flourish. This world's going to be a beautiful place. Amen. I imagine the Garden of Eden was a beautiful place, don't you? Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, God was the first gardener, amen? amen? He planted a garden eastward in Eden, the Bible tells us, and he planted, put man there to take care of it. God planted the garden. Man didn't. God did. God planted the garden. It's going to be a beautiful place when Jesus comes. Amen. You know what else? People aren't going to be sickly. You're not going to see people that are sickly. You're not going to see people that, that, are, that, are, that are going around that uh, have uh, diseases and this AIDS and, and all these types of uh, things. That are going, that's not going to be like that during the millennial reign. You go on and read in verse 3 there in 35. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as in heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out in streams in the desert. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. And the inhabitants of, of dragons where each lay shall grasp uh, with reeds and rushes. The Bible tells us in the highway shall be there in a way and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it but it shall be for those the wayfaring men the fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there but the redeemed shall walk there. You know what brother? Even the beasts of the field autumn Autumn loves animals. Did y'all know that? Mm -hmm. She loves animals. And they love her. She has a gift from God for animals. And you know what? There, we have a cat that nobody, that it won't come around hardly anybody at all, but it'll come to her. It's a stray, and it'll come to her and let her pet it. Glory be to God. You know what? During the millennial reign, the Bible says that the lion is going to lay down with the lamb. Amen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's not going to be any ravenous beasts. The beasts, the bears, the wolves, all of these things, all of these things will be gentle. They'll be peaceful. Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11. This, I mean, this, is, ble this is a blessing. What a prophecy Isaiah 11 is. The Bible says in Isaiah 11 and verse 2 that the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord shall make him of quick understanding and the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth and shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breast of his, his lips shall he slay the wicked. And the righteous shall be the girdle of his loins and the faithfulness. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. And the leopard lie down with the kid, in verse 6. And the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. Sure. That's the Lord. They won't be predators anymore. Amen. You won't have to fear a lion. You won't have to fear a tiger. It'll be as gentle as a lamb. Sure. That's what it's going to be like in the millennial reign. That's what it's going to be like. Wow. The cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. Yeah. A lion's going to eat, it's not going to go and eat meat, it's going to eat grass. Sure. And they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the, the sea. The Bible says that... Uh, what a blessing. And there shall be the root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, and, it shall, and to it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. Another blessing, during the time of the millennial reign, there will not be any war. Amen. There will not be any war at all whatsoever. The book of Micah. The book of Micah, chapter 4. No war, 
Brother, there was no war during the time that Christ came. And there won't be war when he returns after he sets up his kingdom upon this, upon this earth. There will be no war. It will be a, a time of, of peace. It will be a time of, of prosperity. It will be a time of, that people will build homes and lands. And another will not come and inhabit those homes and lands. The Bible says that uh, in, uh, in Micah, the book of Micah, chapter 4, it says, uh, Behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall, shall be stubble, and the day uh, that, that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day of the Lord uh, I shall do this, the Lord of hosts. I, I, I've lost my track somewhere where I'm at here. Forgive me. sound right. Wait a minute. All right. But in the last days, in Micah chapter 4, and that in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and the people shall flow unto it. Many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up into the mountain of the Lord, and into the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways. Unless the Lord says he will teach us of his ways. And we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among many people. And rebuke strong nations afar off. Yeah. And they shall beat their swords in the plowshares. And their spears in the pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall set every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall, shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Lord of hosts hath spoken it. For all the people will walk, every one in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of the Lord of our God forever and ever. So there's going to be those that live to be hundreds of years old, the deserts are going to be fertile places. The beasts of the field, the ravenous beasts, are going to be gentle as a lamb. There's not going to be sickness. Like there's not going to be uh, those that uh, uh, those that follow the Lord. They're not going to be uh, those that uh, uh, have disease and 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 these uh, physical infirmity. They're going to be blessed. But there's going to be those that have to make a choice and even a decision during the millennial reign, as we saw whether they're going to go and worship the Lord or whether they're going to be cursed or whether they're going to be cursed during that period of time. The Bible tells us uh, back in the book of Isaiah, chapter 62, about, about us, about those that have walked in the Lord, those that have trusted in the Lord now before the time comes. The Bible says, For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until the righteous thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all the kings thy glory. 
and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. We're going to be reigning with Christ. We will be given a new name. Hallelujah. And the, everyone who sees us, they're not going to look at us as they look at you now. They'll not look at you and, and uh, uh, say, well, the, you know, there's, there's Bob or there's Gail or there's Jim. They won't look at you that way. You see, because in this time period of the millennial reign, it'll be, it'll be like a story that people will talk about that happened. We read the Old Testament, and we, we look at it, and we try to imagine what it was like. We try to envision what it was like then. But during the millennial reign, people will look back to our time period, where we're at now. And they'll look at us, and they'll say, man, they came through that temptation of sin. Though they were surrounded by sinners, they still hearkened to the voice of the Lord. Though they were tempted to act and to live just as the sinners did, yet they were righteous and lived a righteous life. They walked in the fear of the Lord. Amen. People will remember back to us and they'll remember our time. The Bible says, Then thou shalt be a crown of glory. In verse 3, Thou shalt be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. That's what we'll be like. We will be in the hand of God. We'll still be in the hand of God. And Jesus said, No man can pluck them from my hand. Amen. Amen. We'll still be in the hand of God and God will be using us during the millennial reign. A royal diadem. The Bible goes on and it tells us here that thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land be called be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hesleba, and thy land Beulah. That's where the song Beulah Land comes from. It's, it's scripture. Amen. Isaiah 62. Thy land Beulah. It's a married land. We're the bride of Christ. Amen. Amen. For the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I have set a watchman upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. And give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength, Surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies. And the sons of the strangers shall not drink thy wine for thou which hast labored. But they that have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord. And they that have brought it together shall drink in the courts of my holiness. Go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highway, gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world, Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people. Those that have been redeemed during the millennial reign, the redeemed of the Lord, and thou shalt be called, sought out a city not forsaken. When we reign with God and with Jesus and Jesus' throne during the millennial reign, we will be termed, people will call us the holy people. They will call us the redeemed. When they look at Brother Jim, when they look at me, when they look at Robin during the millennial reign, they'll say that's one of the redeemed. That's one of the ones who were saved by the blood of the Lamb during the millennial reign. That's the way that people will see us. They will see us as the redeemed. We will reign as kings and priests. And what we do today with Jesus, what we do today with the salvation that God has given us, we will live with for eternity in His kingdom. We will live with for eternity. He that is faithful in a few things, God will make him ruler over many. For he that is unfaithful in the least will also be unfaithful in that which is much. Jesus meant what he was saying. Amen. Jesus meant what he was saying. A faithful man who can find. I'm looking forward to be being called 
the redeemed of the Lord. I'm redeemed now. But brother, during the millennial reign, there will be people that see us reigning with Jesus and they'll say, they are the redeemed. They're re the redeemed of the Lord. They came through that time of sin. They won't know what it's like to have sin rolling upon the earth. The God of this world blinding the minds of them that don't believe. Brother, Jesus will be sitting on his throne in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Yeah. And people will see him. And every, there won't be no choice to not believe because he'll already be there. You'll see him. The world will see him reigning. They will see us reigning with him. But they'll still have a choice to worship. Whether they'll worship and whether they'll follow him. And whether they'll be deceived. Whether they'll be deceived during the battle of Gog and Magog. That's yet to come. Let us all bow together in prayer. Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father God, Lord, for all that you've given us. And all, Father God, Lord, that you reveal to us through your scriptures, Father. Lord, I pray, help us, dear Lord God, through your spirit to see the things that are to come. And Lord God, to, to be full of the zeal of the Lord, dear Lord, for what you have promised us, dear Lord God. For Lord God, we know that everything that you have said will come to pass. And Lord God, we know that you will accomplish it, Father. But Lord God, it's not through us. It's not through our own righteousness. It's not through our own uh, abilities, Father. But Lord God, through your spirit and your love and your grace that you've given us. I pray, Father, that each of us, dear Lord, might have this blessed hope in our heart. That Lord God, that none of us would stand at the great white throne judgment, being separated from Christ for eternity but that, Lord God, that we would be with you forever and evermore, serving you in the beauty of your holiness. Father, we'll give you all the praise forevermore in Jesus' name. And amen. 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 Could we maybe sing uh, 32? I was thinking about 72, peace in the bath. Amen. That sounds good, too. Bless the Lord. Amen. Is that the Red Book, sister? It's in Red Book, yeah. I'm not sure how to start it now. Well,
nice now today to have peace in the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for that. You know, uh, Robin, the lesson that Robin was teaching on, the blessed are the peacemakers. And you know, God has called us to be peacemakers. The Bible says, uh, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach good, good tidings, uh, uh, glad things, and who preach the gospel of peace. So, you know, the gospel brings peace Amen. Uh, to those in this world uh, that, we'll, that we'll share it with. And uh, I'm thankful to have peace with God Amen. And, and to live in that peace. And, well, I, I may not have circumstantial peace. There may be uh, a lot of afflictions and there may be a lot of uh, persecution. Uh, so circumstantial peace, that hasn't happened yet. But one day it's coming. In the millennial reign, there will be circumstantial peace. Uh, the things that surround us will be peaceful yeah. because Christ, Christ will reign. I'm looking forward to that. Amen. Anybody have anything you want to add uh, to the service? Anything you want to say? Let's praise the Lord, Brother Jim. Praise, praise the Lord for His mercy endureth forever. Praise the Lord for His mercy endureth forever.